four facts about scoliosis treatment for teens. Unfortunately, scoliosis affects all ages, uh, from babies to elderly and every age in between. But the most common form of scoliosis and most thought of, about scoliosis is adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. And this is when scoliosis is diagnosed between the ages of 10 and 18 years of age. And idiopathic means unknown cause, meaning the majority of scoliosis is diagnosed. There's no single causation associated with why the person's having scoliosis. The person has no other health conditions and they just have scoliosis. And this is what adolescent idiopathic scoliosis is. Scoliosis involves the development of a three-dimensional unnatural sideways spinal curvature. And the main symptom of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis is postural deviation. How it's seeing some asymmetry, asymmetry associated in their shoulders, in their hips, in their waist, in, in their arm length. You're seeing differences in the way they stand and clothes doesn't fit properly or it's, not, it's uneven. And this is typically the number one sign. Now, each, every case is unique, so the severity of the posture misalignment can be very differently, very different, but that's normally what brings on the diagnosis. Um, the sclerosis diagnosis in teens is typically done initially through a physical examination. They notice the posture, uh, posture misalignment. They may bend them forward. They may see some rib arching, some rib de deformity as associated, some uh, shoulder asymmetry, waist asymmetry, and normally they're recommended for an x-ray to confirm what's happening inside. Now, one thing I want you to understand is that there's never a normal posture asymmetry in a child or a teen growing. If we're seeing uneven shoulders, you're seeing uneven waist, uneven arm, uh, arm differences from the body, normally that's a sign of something. And you definitely want to at least take that to your doctor to have them evaluate it or have an x-ray taken to see what's happening inside. Once the x-ray is taken, if there's a curvature that's noticed, they'll use something called a Cobb angle to measure the x-ray to determine the severity of the scoliosis. The Cobb angle measures how far or how severe the scoliosis is, and it helps classify the condition further as a mild, moderate, severe, or very severe scoliosis. And these classifications help us determine what type of treatment that you would, be, you would qualify for with your scoliosis. Now, fact one is that you just don't have to wait and see what's going to happen. The number one recommendation for treatment for cases of, for teens with scoliosis is nothing. They just watch it and see what happens. And while you're watching and you're waiting, unfortunately, you can be losing valuable time while the curve could be possibly worsening, causing the curve to increase. And as the curve worsens, it's, it's, you're dealing with a more severe scoliosis. And normally, whatever treatment option that you choose, you're going to have less results later on because as curves worsen, they're harder to treat. So there's two main treatment options, and I call this traditional versus conservative. Traditional options pretty much do nothing. They just watch and they wait during mild scoliosis. In moderate scoliosis, if the person's not going through rapid growth, they, they do nothing again. And it's only when they break 40 degrees is when they consider scoliosis severe, and then they're going to recommend surgery at this point. So they wasted very valuable time during this progressive state. And it's a reactionary response that normally leads patients towards surgery. The only exception to that in the traditional approach is if the person is going through rapid progressive growth spurts, they may recommend a brace to slow down progression. But the majority of the time, the treatment is no treatment. Fact number two is scoliosis treatment doesn't have to limit your child's future career or family plans. Surgical treatment can make a scoliotic spine weaker, it can make it less, less functional, it can put restrictions upon your life, thus impacting what type of career paths that you can have, you can have, especially ones that could be physically demanding. Those undergoing conservative treatment options normally have increased flexibility, increased spinal st strength, and increased sp function. Therefore, it only improves future options for career, and we also know Conservative treatment also is not associated with impacting a female's ability to get pregnant or safely deliver children in the future. So conservative options can help help this not have an impact on your life and well-being. Fact number three, scoliosis treatment is not limited to surgery. Even if surgery was the only treat option that you've ever been presented with, there are other options available. Conservative treatments integrates a number of different types of treatment disciplines. We call it a multimodal approach using chiropractic care, using therapy, using rehabilitation, using corrective bracing, and can offer teens a richer, fuller life, meaning they're not going to be limited by having scoliosis rods in their spine. They don't have to worry about the rods. Um, uh, causing complications and interferences and what things they want to do. And more importantly, as teens 
tend to reduce their scoliosis and make their body better by engaging in their treatment, they have this sense of accomplishment. Like they overcame something that they, that people were told there's nothing else you can do other than have surgery. So this conservative treatment can offer all this and it does it really at a fraction of the cost relative to scoliosis surgery. So the cost, not only in the health and the well-being, but also um, monetary costs can be relatively significant for patients that choose conservative treatment versus surgical treatment. Fact number four, Early detection can increase treatment response. When a patient is diagnosed early with scoliosis, if, the tr if that diagnosis is also reacted with or responded with a proactive conservative treatment approach that w is looking to reduce the scoliosis and not just wa watch and wait and see what's gonna happen, there's much less limits in what can be achieved. In fact, the smaller that we treat the curve, the more like the, the greater percentage we can, re we can reduce it and the greater results that we can get. We know, Adolescent idiopathic scoliosis isn't painful, so therefore you have to screen. And the only way you screen is by looking at somebody's posture. And but if you're just if posture is just waved off, like not a big deal, and that early detection is not led to a diagnosis, which has led to treatment, therefore the early detection is becomes useless. Your scoliosis is definitely easier to treat when it's mild, before the, curve, before the curve has progressed, before it become more rigid, and before it become more severe. Since we know the trigger for progression is growth, that in adolescents that are going into this growth stage, if we know they're going into growth stage and we have a small curve, reducing the curve reduces the risk of progression during growth, which leads to a much, much, much more positive outcome. So the most important thing about treatment for teens is that the, and when we look at treatment options and we treat curves closer to the diagnosis, typically equates to greater treatment success. And the greater success, we definitely look at less likely chances of having surgery, surgical intervention and spinal fusion. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we've been treating teens with scoliosis for over 20 years. And we've gotten amazing results at reducing scoliosis cases that have become surgical and reducing them below surgical threshold. But I'm more impressed with results that of the patients that we have that we treat that are pre-surgical because we never never even make surgery become an option. So the fear of curves progressing to surgical, surgical levels becomes completely eliminated because we see curves reducing at, at, at earlier levels, the less likely them becoming surgical is, is again gone. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.